Hi folks, Mr. George here with Friends and Neighbors. Today we're gonna meet with our friend, Dr. Mike, who's head of the conservatory here at the Huntington Museum of Art, and he's gonna give you some tips on your house plants. I want to talk to you about growing house plants. And when I talk about house plants, what I mean are the plants that grow in the tropics and subtropics and they grow in the ground. Now there's three areas, actually there's four areas I'd like to talk about. One is the root zone. One is the temperature, light requirements, and then uh, watering. The first thing would be the root zone. And the important part is the kind of container that you're going to use. The important thing is to make sure that they have drainage holes. The second part is the potting mix that goes into the pot. We have several different ingredients that are normally used. One is perlite, one is vermiculite, sand, sometimes charcoal, and peat moss. They're all used in some combination. What I like is I like to use a mix that contains at least 50% sphagnum peat moss. And I emphasize sphagnum because there's a lot of peat mosses that are made out of different things, but sphagnum has good water retention properties. And so I always look for that in the label when I buy a uh, potting mix. Now, the other thing that's of a concern is the temperature. Now, the thing about tropical plants is that most houses are kept at, at temperatures that are good for house plants anyway. That's usually 65 degrees to 80. And the, the other problem can be light. The concern about light is I like to give plants light from early morning till about 10 o'clock or afternoon after about two until evening. When you use that kind of daylight, you don't have to worry about plants burning. Most of these plants will grow under a canopy of trees, so they, you, they are accustomed to a little bit of shade. But early morning, late afternoon is good. Now, the fourth thing is water. And this can be a real problem for people. What I like to do is I like to take the plant and actually put my finger into the pot and test the, the soil moisture with my finger. If it's lightly moist or dry, then it's time to water it. And when I water plants, I like to make sure that I add enough water that it drains out the bottom. This accomplishes a couple of things. First of all, it makes sure that all the roots get water that are in the pot so that the potting mix is thoroughly wet. And the other thing is that when you're using city water, a lot of times you can have salt buildup like calcium, magnesium, carbonates, phosphates. And so it's good to actually have the water flow through the pot and that'll take all the excess salts out with it. A lot of people refer to this as leaching the pot. Now, one of the things you can do is if you're having problems with watering, and a lot of people do, if, you're, if the pot is too small or if you just forget to water during the week, one of the things you can do is use a wick watering system. There's a lot of, well, here's one. And what it amounts to is to having some form of yarn or fabric that comes out of the bottom of the pot that goes into the pot. And then this will actually sit in water and wick up water into the soil so that the soil stays evenly moist. There are a lot of, lot of commercial pots. They, they call them self-watering pots. But what you can do is you can make your own. And one of the ways, one of the ways I like to do that is I like to use acrylic yarn. And I emphasize acrylic yarn because if you use cotton or wool, it will rot very quickly and then it'll fall apart and you won't be uh, getting water into your plant. So one of the things you can do is to take the yarn 
and I like to put it in a little bit of water to make sure it's wet. And then take the pot that you're interested in, and it works really well if, if you can have the 50% heat that I was talking about earlier, because that will uh, hold moisture a little better and allow the moisture to be taken from the yarn into the soil. Now the, the yarn goes up through the soil, across the pot and down. And so now all we have to do is measure out the container. For example, if we were gonna set it in, in here, we can measure out the height and then cut it down so it's a little easier to manage and then set it through the grate and then fill it with water. And what I like to do is I like to make sure that there's a good connection. So I will add water to the pot, let the water run through the, the yarn. So there's a good connection between the soil and the yarn and then the yarn and the water in the container. And then what we'll do is we'll fill this up to about a half inch from the bottom of the pot. And this works out really well because if you forget to water, it's no problem. And if you just like to water on Saturdays or Sundays, for example, it, it will have enough water to, to keep it moist throughout the week. And then when you think about it or on the weekends, you can go ahead and fill it back up to a half inch from the pot. If it does get two inches below the pot, be sure to fill it up again because sometimes the water has a hard time wicking up that distance. So, if you're interested in growing house plants, I would like you to consider using a potting mix that's 50% sphagnum peat moss. And if you're a little short on time, try wick watering. Folks, I hope you found your visit with Dr. Mike Beck helpful and informative. As always, take care of one another. Hey folks, welcome back to the show. Thanks for tuning in and watching from home. Let's take a break from all the day-to-day -day regular biz and spend some time with our neighbors and friends at time again. We're talking three simple things, our right? education and nature. We'll hear what Mr. George thinks and come back just in case. You got lots on the way in all the beautiful colors. Just don't forget to take care of one.